Hello there, welcome to Fully Painted. Today I'm gonna show you how I kitbash this custom hero for my Seraphon army for Age of Sigma. Now grab your brushes, we're going to the lab. This project started with me participating in a 2v2 narrative event, for which I wanted to make a custom hero. I made a war scroll with the anvil of Apotheosis with it and tested it out during a game with friends. I really liked playing with the hero so I decided it needed its proper model. Also I had a lot of bits lying around, especially from the Old Blood on Carnosaur kit, so it really was a no-brainer. The Old Blood on Carnosaur kit has a lot of bits and pieces that I could use and that I have left over, and mostly uh, several heads, several arms, legs, etc. But I was missing the crucial back and tail combo. So I started looking online for things and ideas to replace that. And that's where I stumbled onto this Lustria Online forum and this conversion that I found really genius that used the um, tail of the carnosaur to do the bit business. So I had all the bits to do this and try it out. So I thought, uh, let's go for it. So not being a massive conversion pro, I tried to be fairly meticulous about the prospect, the project. So I started gathering all the bits I knew I needed and then doing some pseudo test fits to get an idea of where I wanted to go. Here you can see the head, I'm fairly certain what I want to do. I know I want this weapon and I'm checking the angle as well with the arm. I know I want this arm because it's obviously super cool. And yeah, I keep checking every now and then how things are going, what the angles I have in terms of composition and um, how the mini works. Then I start gluing the things I know for sure um, how they're gonna fit. The head is a good example here and I keep checking with the tail. You're gonna see here um, at the first stages of this kit bash that I constantly check with the tail how it's going because I'm unsure if I cut it um, too long or not. And I don't want it to be too long because that's gonna be a bother for the composition for it to sit on, on the base. I started going the uh, mechanical arm because um, I'm fairly confident I'm not going to change it that much, at least not its position. Sorry for the blurry footage, there's going to be quite a bit of it because I, for some reason, had trouble getting into focus this entire kit bash. Once again we check for with the tail. I, I keep checking the tail because I, I want to make sure the angle is proper. I know he's going to be hunched over a bit, but I don't want him to be a hunchback. So, you know, keep checking. Uh, stick in the second arm, not too well. Um, but, yeah. I start adding green stuff also to fill in the, the voice uh, in the torso, but also to help me um, help with me the, the tail because I wanted to stick uh, in a bit that way I can visualize better because I have the tail sticking inside and then now I can position the legs as well to get a proper feel for where I'm going that's the main gist I got from this um, project is just trying to get vibes basically uh, and the more confident I'm, I'm getting with uh, where I'm going, I add more and more green stuff, I glue more and more stuff. Trying to make sure of the angles of the legs right now to make them seem somewhat natural. And yeah. Spread the green stuff around. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to do anything too complicated because I'm not the greatest sculptor. 
here I'm checking the angle of the weapon uh, because I'm not sure I like it as it is right now. It's not too dynamic. So I'm trying around some different angles. That's what you see me doing right now. Because as it looks right now without any angles, it looks boring. But if I, I could manage it to look like that, the staff with the uh, very wide open pose, it would look way cooler. So I start cutting out the arm here. I ditch the knife and use the clippers, get a proper fast job. That's how it looks afterwards. And that allows me for more stretch out. Um, I filled it all with green stuff, which I didn't film because I'm not too confident with my sculpting. Sorry about that. But it, basically I just put green stuff in the hole to keep the, the, the arm wide. Didn't do any proper sculpting. I filled the, the, the torso as well, the, the back, sorry, as well, and the butt. Uh, no proper sculpting yet, it's just putting green stuff to, to get forms and volumes. And now I start the sculpting with the arm. I checked some references online. You can look up some bodybuilders to do that. They have nice defined muscles. Uh, that, so that give you, gives you the shape you're looking for. I bought these, uh, this tool for cheap, by the way. And I'm constantly using my own saliva to wet it all. I don't know if that's a good thing, uh, if it's dangerous or not, so I'm gonna say don't do it and be safe. So yeah, um, uh, I sculpted the arm as you can see, some muscle on the arm, and now I'm currently sculpting some scales on the side, trying to somewhat replicate what's on the original uh, model, the old blood. He has scales on the side like this. Basically I put some green stuff and then shape it and flatten it a bit get some nice and smooth scales and now I start to cut the individual scales with my scalpel to get a clean definition if I did it with something non-sharp it would just squeeze the the green stuff and just destroy anything I made before here I clean up this shape and that's how it looks how the right side looks looks pretty good I think and now I have to replicate it on the left side. So as you can see, I put some uh, light green stuff here just to get something fresh to sculpt. And then I start shaping um, all my uh, scales. And once that's done, I just um, flatten them and smooth them out. And that's the final result. Looks pretty good, I think. Sorry for not showing too much footage. I'm not too confident with it. And here I want to I wanna cut out uh, the, the hand because I want him to be pointing. So I cut uh, each finger individually, uh, send down the base of the fingers and then glue them with a bit of more angle. And that's how it looks. He looks like he's pointing a bit more, which I like. Um, this made the fingers a bit flimsy, so I had to thicken them a bit with the with some green stuff. And now I'm adding some um, scars all over because I want him to be somewhat old and all that. And yeah, that's it. That's how it looks. So let's get to the basing. For the bases, I knew I wanted to do some really cool looking Seraphon stuff uh, behind the hero. So I raided my uh, box for bits, Seraphon bits. I used uh, stuff from the Setaganon kits and from the Kano kits those horns on the uh, base of the Sunfire Thrower and then I reused um, the top of the tr throne from the Old Blood on Carnosaur to get this sort of arch looking thing, drilled some hold and put some pins and glued it into this uh, horn base which is like the base of the Sunfire which I as I mentioned plus the horns from the Carnosaur kit glued on top and then I added some smaller horns onto the side of this arch. This is how I want it to look on the base, so it frames the, the saurus nice and well. I put a lot of cork in, not only to um, accommodate the tail of the saurus hero, but also because I love uh, putting some cork on bases. Team Cork Tower. This is how it looks. 
I liked having the the top one have a flat side because I think it looks good with the arch. We like how this looks. Just as a test fit of the hero on it, and you can see he has a foot very forward, and uh, so I will have to put some bits in for him to walk on. Otherwise, it's gonna look weird. Floating rock. But yeah, I test some bits to have a forward rock going on. Kind of like the Lion King thingy. I put some air drying clay on top of the whole thing so I can use my texture roller uh, to add some Aztec texture on it. I want it like he, um, to look like he's walking on some old Seraphon uh, runes and whatnot, or temple. I don't know. Just roll in the texture. I test fitted some other rune seraphon bits and pieces on the side, but I'm not gonna stick them to the clay because it doesn't stick that well. But that's how it looks basically. That's what I'm going for. That's and once it's dry, I clean it up a bit, shape it up nicely so it doesn't look like clay folded over. And then I start adding milliput to it, which for some reason is not wanting to stick to the base. Damn millipot. Prefer sticking to your fingers, I guess. I don't know. I uh, put my my uh, saffron runes again. I think they look dope. And now I stick some sausages into the holes. There's probably a joke in there somewhere. I do the same for the base of this arch. I try to be clean with it, but I know I can set it, send it uh, down if I want to be, it to be cleaner. And that's how it looks. Pretty pleased with that and the position and the composition. So now I uh, start making it look like a jungle. I put some texture paste. I put two of them actually. A more sandy one, which is the red one here. Um, I think it's a Vallejo texture paste, don't remember which. And I mix it up with the mud one on the base. And then I glued a ton of plants, which, sorry, I didn't film. But it's just gluing some plants. Some The grey ones are from Epic Basing. And uh, the green ones are just um, plastic plants I got um, uh, from for an aquarium thingy. I try to uh, glue them into uh, clumps of the same leaves, so it looks more natural. Keep adding some runes as well. This is from the Bastilladon kit, I think. And I figured the the, um, the front of the rock was a bit too forward, so I cut it again using my clippers. We get in there, boom, shorten that stuff down, and we put some uh, texture paste on it. So that's how it looks. And now I start adding some uh, tufts and uh, some more uh, rocks and, and stuff, making it more lively. You know, um, for my jungles, I like putting a lot of different varied textures. So yeah, tiny rocks and coconut fiber. I really swear uh, by coconut fiber, you really should get some. It's fairly cheap and it's really, really good. It looks really realistic because it's several different layered uh, textures looking things of different sizes I mean got those um, tiny twigs looking things and and various sized rocks so it looks more natural that's how the base looks and that's how the guy looks and the end of it and that's the two of them together I'm really happy with the way it looks and uh, what I achieved for this project. Uh, the Saurus looks rad, I love the fact that it's pointing um, and how I managed to get his back with the tail, I think it looks really good. Uh, also really happy with the base, um, it looks nice and jungly and I can't wait to show you the painted version. Anyways, that's it for this video, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a like and if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. For the next video, I'll show you how I painted the hero, so if you don't want to miss that, please consider subscribing. But in the meantime, I have to skedaddle. So until then, I hope you stay adventurous and that you keep painting, because painting is cool.